It's time once again to slip into your camo, grab your bow, and join us out in the field for another episode of the Up North Journal, presented by PSE Archery. The Up North Journal crew is knocked and ready to rock for another exciting adventure. So let's step outside and hit the trail. This episode of the Up North Journal podcast is brought to you by PSE Archery, Scentlock Technologies, Scent Blocker, Rambo Bikes, Hunter's Blend Coffee, Limwalker Game Calls, Stanislavski Releases, Copper John Sights, Easy Cut Outdoor Products, Fourth Arrow Camera Arms, Wind Sense Hunting Sense, X Stand Tree Stands, Spot Shooters, Gut Check Indicators, and Packer Mets Cult Packers. And don't forget, you can catch us in syndication at 2 p.m. Eastern Time on GoodTalkRadio.com. Welcome back to another episode of the Up North Journal Podcast, everybody. I'm host Mike Adams sitting in the cabin and a little dreary, a little rainy, wind's blowing, sitting here with Dan DeFault. Wind's blowing. It was raining like the dickens earlier. It was. I made. I, I had about two and a half minutes to spare before it drenched me. I got the backyard cut. See, there you go. See, we're both running against time. The 20 by 20 spot that had been underwater all year finally dried up enough while I was on vacation to come home right. and cut it. And I got the backyard done, and then it downpoured. See, and that, that's funny because it's been, it's like nothing's drying out. No. It's like. It's been rain. Yeah, it's been rain, and then you might get a day. It's like, okay, it's good, and then the next day it rains. Right, right. So, well, I left Sunday morning early, a week ago, a week ago today. Left bright and early, took off on the road. It was drizzling. It rained all the way until I got into about Nashville. Oh, okay. Nashville, Tennessee. All the I way. I was waiting for you to say to Ohio border. No, no, it rained all the uh, way down. Okay. It was drizzling. And then there was no sunshine at all until I got down and I crossed into Alabama. See, see that blue sky right there? There's a crack of blue sky. See it? Yep. I didn't know what that was. It's been <laughs> so doggone long. <laughs> I, I, I would agree with you. And I, I didn't see sunshine until I crossed the border. I mean, you, seriously. You know, it's one of those things that it's that time. It, it, you would think we, we should be drying out here. Yeah. No, it it, uh, it was bad. And that seriously, that was the first time I saw sun in probably a couple weeks. And I'm like, wow, what is that big thing in the sky? You know, and got down to my dad's place down on the farm and uh, kind of hung out for a while. Got his cattle out of the field. Yeah. How many has he got? About 70 head. 70 head. Yeah, wow. of beef cattle. So, mm, you know, and when you're on the farm, you got to eat good. Now, that is eating good. I'm not going to lie. Absolutely. The near half was for me. The far half was for my dad. Actually, I cut that, that near half in half again in quarter, but I did finish a whole quarter by myself. <laughs> my brother continued planting in the rain. He must have uh, been planting his garden. That ain't good. Hey, Chris Kreiner, what's going on? Uh, hey, Chris, just quick question for you while we're on here. Have you seen fawn drop yet? I've heard people are seeing fawn drops, and I've been kind of out of offline here for a while. Just wondering. So people are seeing fawn drops. but So, yeah, I got out, and uh, we eat a little food, and then we headed down to the beach. You eat a little food? It looks like you're eating half of a watermelon there. Yeah, right? it was good, man. You know, it southern looked, cooking. It looks good. It looks red. Mm-hmm. I only put on two pounds while I was gone. I, I, weigh, I did you're, weigh when I got home. You're on vacation. It's all right. Two pounds. Tomorrow's so, back to the gym. Going back to the gym tomorrow. I started back today. Okay. That's good. I saw that. So then we head to Gulf Shores. Yeah. Shores, it's water. Yeah. It's yeah. ocean. Head to, head to the beach, and... Of course, Up North Journal was in the house. Absolutely, I so, see that. Had to, had to. That was my. Uh, that was your. That was me posting on the wall for Up North Journal. There you go. Uh, Chris says yes. He found one Friday. Okay, cool. So the fawns are hitting the ground. They are. That means we need to get out and do some coyote hunting. And I think that's exactly what Chris said. Okay, it's time yep. to get out. Start watching and, for him. Start watching for him and. Uh, but yeah, it was one of those things. Uh, you took off, you got down there, you made it to the look at that, and you made up North Journal Mark. That's right, and footprints and and my fingerprint there in the sand, and that was it. And just left uh, left tracks and made memories. So yeah, it was cool, man. That was that was the beach, man, right there on the on the Gulf of Mexico. But let's get to the good stuff. I mean, that's what this first segment's going to be about right here is. And those of you listening to the podcast, obviously, you can't see the photos. So you got to go over you, and check out our Facebook yes. page or Wednesday. Wednesday, when I release it to YouTube, you can always pick it up again. I'll release it in YouTube, uh, and then we'll release the link back on Facebook. Well, while I was down there, I made a friend. Yeah. So you replaced me? No, not really. Oh, okay. But I had to have somebody to talk to. Looks like Big Bird. Yeah, because... Uh, you know, wife, she just kind of hung out on the beach and, and chilled, you know, relaxed. And actually, that's what we did a lot of. But, yeah, this guy come walking up, and it was amazing to see. I don't know I, I don't know what kind of bird that is. Is that a heron of some sort? I'm assuming, yeah. You know, I, I don't know. Um, I don't know what it is. Did he get, how close were you? 
Uh, I got with within probably 20 feet of him. So he's used to people, obviously. Yeah, you know, he okay. wasn't scared. There was people all along the beach, and he was just kind of doing his thing. This was at sunset. And uh, the cool thing about this thing is there was a guy fishing, and, dude, he got right up next to him. And he stood there and stood there and stood there while this guy was fishing. I bet you he was waiting to see if he was going to catch something. Yeah, I think that's exactly what it was. I bet you he's learned that these guys that do what he's doing yeah. bring fish, yeah. bring dinner. It's like, give me something good to eat. Give me a treat, you know. That's and awesome. he stood there like that. And the guy kind of looked at him and really, you know, it's like, hey, bud, what's up? And he kept fishing, you know, and he'd cast and fish. And Did the guy catch anything? No, no, but I only seen one person catch a fish. But I did see fish down in the water quite a few, actually. Oh, okay. Uh, but you know, he hung around for a little while and I, I think he kind of got perturbed after he didn't catch dinner and, and he he's started like, walking off. He's like, yeah, I'm out of here. <laughs> <laughs> so, all right. You're not providing here. I'm yeah, out of here. Yeah. The only thing that, that out of the whole thing, uh, if you look on the horizon and those are oil platforms and we were like right in line, right straight out in front of us was like the, the Eastern most edge of the oil platforms. I counted 26. Oh, like, from your view. Yeah. Straight out in front, all the way to the West. Oh, Western Shore. Okay, and I actually, know, actually, I didn't know what they were. That's why I asked you yeah. before we came out. Like, what? Are, what? Are, I thought they were yeah. boats, actually. Well, you know, I mean, I, I don't like to see them on the horizon. You're there, for, you for the view, but I also understand for us to be able to go up north and do what we do, we got to have fuel. Got to have fuel, <laughs> so, and, we, and we don't want to import it, so we got to go get right. it somehow. So I'm not going to get on that political kick right now. Nah. So yeah, we we hung out, you know, got to see some sunsets and hang out a little bit. There's a couple more little artsy fartsy pictures we'll throw up. Uh, but it was, it was all good, you know, hanging out, I got to relax, but I did catch a, I caught a fish while I was down there. Well, let's, what did you catch? Uh, I caught this guy. Well, he fits in the palm of your hand. Yeah, I was, I, actually, I was, uh, he was floating in the water and I scooped him up. Actually, it looks like you could use him as a dagger. Well, I posted this online and we had, uh, three or four guys that listened to the show post and I said, that's a ballyhoo. Now. Question I have is that a small one, big one? Are they small like this? Or? Um, they said put it on a hook and cast it out because that's what they use to catch like uh, big fin tuna and blue and blue marlin oh. and stuff like that. So it's a bait fish. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. So a ballyhoo. I guess that's what they are called. Is a ballyhoo? Yes. Um, let's see if I can find the picture here a little closer. The thing that struck me odd about this little guy was. The bill on him is below his mouth instead of above like you'd see like on the swordfish. So would that be to scoop? I don't know. It was like a needle. It was more like a, a needle on him than anything. A needle? Okay. Yeah, like a spear. And on the tip of it, you can't see it right there really plain, but it uh, it was red, like a blood red. I don't know if that was, really? if that was to attract something. I don't know. I don't know if it was to attract something so he could eat it. <laughs> but uh, That is pretty cool. Uh, oh, uh, Courtney said that she thought that was a crane of some sort, that she thought. Exactly, yeah. I had no idea. I'm uh, going to go with the crane family. Yeah. Just not what you're... I just wonder if it's uh, the ones that we're, we're talking about hunting here. Sandhills? Sandhill cranes, yeah. A ribeye in the sky. I did see, like, a cutout of a, of a ribeye on the side of that bird at one point. Oh, I know, <laughs> Absolutely, I would too. There's so, no doubt about it. And, uh, you know, speaking of people getting their lunch and everything, this, this guy here was trying to eat that crab, and he was having none of it. Oh, the, that was a live crab. That was a live crab, and that bird, uh, seagull there, was trying to get a hold of him. And as he's dancing sideways to get away from him, he's snapping that one claw at him as the bird's trying to peck at him. That I wish I'd had video. That would have been funny. That yeah. would have absolutely been funny. It, it because, was pretty comical. So he never did get him. No, he didn't. He went back in the water away he went. Did you see that in the morning when you went out? Uh, that was first morning, yeah. When, when you would go out in the morning, did you see... Uh, a lot of things washed up on shore in the morning. Yeah, more so than yeah than in the evening. Yeah, okay. especially even like seashells and stuff. People That's go right. through and pick them up. Right, and, exactly. That's uh, just wondering. A lot of birds, you know, uh, sandpiper out there doing his thing. Uh, I have a feel those things nest quite a bit. But uh, you know, the best the best part of everything was was a scene like this. Uh, I took this photo eating dinner in Florida while. Uh, everything you see in the photo is in the state of Alabama. We're right on the Florida-Bama line. And all I can say is, yes, I did go to Florida-Bama, and what happens in Florida-Bama stays in Florida-Bama. There you go, see? Now, my, my wife and I, we did. We went over to, to the club across the street. It's pretty cool. If you're ever there, I highly recommend going there just for the experience alone. It was pretty cool. So Excellent, excellent. You were recommended to go there, didn't you? Yeah, by Dave Wilkins. Dave Wilkins. So... But, Mr. Dave. Yeah, I, I got to see a, a lot of critters down there. So, I mean, while we were there, I didn't see any alligators, didn't see any sharks, but I did see a lot of fish in the water. 
You know? Cool, that's good. You know, yeah. some of them were, you know, you know, yay long, foot and a half right, long. Right, exactly. You know, you dipped your toes in the ocean and saw all the all the live things in there. Yeah, you know, and it's just good to relax and recharge your batteries. And I was always looking at, at critters. <laughs> Absolutely. It's like how could I how could I hunt that? How could I eat that? <laughs> so, and some of them I did eat. I had a lot of shrimp down there too. Right. Shrimp and whitefish. We eat uh, quite a bit of that. So. You know that's awesome. You know you you went off and recharge your batteries i went away the i went away for a couple of days myself that weekend and uh i ended up running into a familiar face of ours i saw that how how, how did that happen and tell everybody who that was well when you're when you're out in the middle of well i guess it's not nowhere when you're over on the south side of grand rapids hastings is kind of in the middle of the so actually we went and agriculture looked, we country. went and actually looked for uh gun lake okay uh and there's a state park over so north, which is north of south, Grand Rapids, south east of Grand Ra- of Grand Rapids. Okay, it's not the same Gun Lake I'm thinking of because a buddy of mine that I work with has a cabin on Gun Lake. I wouldn't be surprised if that's the same one. No, no. his is up really past uh, okay. Man- Manistee or Manistique. Ah, Manistee. Manistee. Yeah. So we went and found this park. Okay, we checked it out. It was kind of blustery and windy and not really good for fishing. So we're like, eh, we'll just cruise around. Come upon this sign that says Hastings this way, and uh, you, you hastily be- went that way. You ever been to Hastings? Nope. You? Nope. Let's go. <laughs> All right. So we went to Hastings. So we're driving down, and she goes, "Hey, there's Bob's Gun and Tackle. I think it's Bait Gun and Tackle." And I remember seeing their ads in the Michigan Out of Doors magazines, right, all the time. Mm-hmm. I said, "Oh yeah, okay, I remember." And right underneath that sign is this big black truck that says <laughs> Killer Food Plots on it. Did you see Nick? So I'm like, she goes, hey, you want to stop? And I said, all right, here I am in the middle of nowhere on vacation, and I'm going to pull in because there's a killer food plot. Sure enough, I go in, ask where Nick is. And this is kind of, I've never been in this place before. Right. And they actually have a bargain barn, which is like an eighth of a mile behind the store. Okay. So you have to take a a two-track down to the bargain barn. That's cool. Right. So... Pull up, walk in, and there's Nick giving his speech. So I got to talk with Nick. That's cool. Yeah, so we're going to have him on the show and talk with him a little bit. And it fine. is that time of year. It is. Talked with him and uh, him and Lincoln Roan, and cause they live so close to each other up there. But uh, no, I got to see Nick on, on my little vacation there, and uh, it's amazing when you're out traveling in the middle of nowhere what you run into, or who you run into. Right, absolutely. So he was talking about getting things in the ground, food plotting, and he had about a dozen people there. Okay. And... Uh, they were listening to a seminar, and uh, it was pretty cool. So, yeah, got to, got to see Nick and talk to him a little bit. Well, I know uh, you, you mentioned Lincoln Roan and, and and Nick. You got something going next weekend. Absolutely. Um, I tell you what, let's take a break. Let's come back. I want to I want to pick your brain a little bit about what you got going and what you're going to be doing at camp here uh, All right. to get prepared for deer season. Absolutely. So, we're going to step outside real quick, and we'll be right back after this. PSE Archery has reinvented the way you buy bows. From now on, you can make the most educated decision possible by basing your bow choice specifically on your shooting needs and goals. All you need to do is ask yourself, what kind of shooter am I? What do I want to achieve? PSE will help find the right category for you. So, what kind of shooter are you? Find out at psearchery.com. Welcome back. Second segment of the show. Back from vacation. Danny and I both. Danny took a short one. I took a long one. Hey, Ken Cicluna. What's going on tonight? Good to see you in the cabin with us tonight. Um, so, so it's it's Memorial it's, Day weekend coming it's up. It's Memorial Day weekend. It's my annual trip up to the cabin. Would this be your first time up? Yep. So it's, you don't know what you're going to run into when you get there. Uh, you, so you drive in. You got the chainsaw <laughs> in a location. You can properly get to it. Just in case you can't get down the trail, mm-hmm. so isn't that kind of fun though? I mean, you don't want to, you don't want a bunch of work, but it's like it's anticipation. Am I going to get in to camp, or am I going to so, do a little work? So as you come down the trail, at one point you should be able to see the roof of the the cabin. You should be. What does that mean? Well, that's the question. <laughs> you always first thing is you you turn down you come down the trail and you look you, you hit the gate you unlock the gate and you can see down the trail uh-huh. and you, you're like looking to see if anything's crossed the trail. Yeah. Then you have to deal with that if you have to. Okay. 
then as you as you start going down the trail, you start looking. You can see the the, the electrical pole, and then you start to see the the top of the roof. Uh-huh. Then everything should be okay. Okay. Because when you don't see a roof, that's not a good sign. <laughs> Is the roof blown off the place, or is there too much snow on it that you can't see the roof? Or has too much snow taken it down? Yeah, okay, gotcha. So that's so that's always like the first, get into camp, get through the trail, make sure the cabin's still standing, unlock the door, and then break and open the cabin, getting the water up and running, and, and seeing how everything's made it through the winter. Right now, I know there's a lot of water up there. Mm-hmm. And so... Uh, Do you have to worry about flooding? Of your place? No. Or are you up high enough? I'm a, it, what they did, basically, when they built this cabin was they actually went through the swamp and came up to, like, a high spot. Okay. And then that's where they put it. So the the creek will probably be high, but our bridge has, like, got seven layers to it. Okay. So should be okay. All right. But then uh, once you get in there and you get it up and running and you get a fire going to get the, the dampness out of the cabin... Um, then it's time to decide what you're going to do. Mm-hmm. Obviously, make all your repairs if necessary first. But I want to get up there, and I got some food plots I want to throw in this month so I can get them going and uh, get some summer food plots for the deer. Okay. Um, what I want to do is I'm going to take the Packer Max with me. Okay. Lincoln, uh, you did this down in Indiana, mm-hmm. and Lincoln kind of mentioned about using it as well for. I got to see how. I, I don't know how tall the weeds are. I don't know what I'm getting into yet. Okay. So can I mow it? Can I weed whack them? Right. Can I, you know, I'll have my four-wheelers with me with the drag. I just don't know what I'm going to run into yet. Now, these are the food plots you've already planted last year? Yep. I okay. planted them last year, and so I got to get into them. Uh, the one I'm hoping I can do a little bit more work on, it's kind of the one that's more in the open. Um, I want to get that. I want to get some seed down there, get that Packer Max in there, kind of get things turned up. Between the Packer Max and the drag, I think I should be able to do a pretty good job. Okay. I'd like to get a, I'd like to one day get a rototiller or a, of that nature in there and, and kind of get it. Get the ground broke. Right. So. You know, when we had that down there in Indiana, we, we noticed in that small clearing that we made, uh, I wish I had the photos of it, but I didn't know we were going to go this direction with the talk tonight. But it, as we turned and made circles as we were turning with that Packer Max, you know, what is, what's the width Four on feet. that? Four feet wide. That thing was turning. Obviously, when you take a corner, it turns quicker on the outside than it does on yep. the inside. So it actually tears the ground up a little bit. And you gave me that idea to do that, and I'm hoping with it being soft ground, it'll do that. I'll be able to do that, and I'll probably use the four wheeler like you did because I don't think my my Ranger might be too big for a turning circle. For a turning, radius, yeah. Okay. So I'm hoping the four wheeler will be able to do that. And like Deb says, getting the critters out. Yeah, you never know what find you might find inside. Okay. One year we found a weasel. Nice. A little, and, little uh, guest. A little white weasel. Did you? Oh, an ermine. It was. It was. Yeah. It was pretty funny, actually. Yeah, it, it was those one of those YouTube moments when your cousin comes out on the front porch and says, "We got a problem, <laughs> huh? What? Mister Houston, we got a problem. Danny, we got a problem. Right. <laughs> so it actually went out the door and it was good. Mm. And then my brother's asking, "Am I taking more apple trees? Uh, I'm not taking them this time. I'll probably if, if that that'll probably be a Labor Day thing." Okay. I'll take them up in Labor Day for the fall. I do want to see how our apple trees did do, uh, going in with low expectations, because I know those deer up there will... Right. I I put a fence around it. uh, I put an orange snow fence around it. Right. But I I don't know what the snow did to the fencing. Right. I got you. Right. So... Yeah. Interesting. You know, take some before and after pictures of your fields. Absolutely. You know, a lot of us kind of know what what you're doing up there, and your trees, too. See how they did. I'm hoping some of those... I'm hoping the couple trees in the woods made it. I'm hoping the ones in the field made it as well. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'm going to, I think I want to get some oats and clover. That's what I was going to ask you. What are you going to plant? Um, I know Wayne has mentioned about getting some oats down mm-hmm. and some red, red clover, I think it was. Uh, I'd like to get some of that, pick some up, get that down. I know my cousin's got some seed as well. Uh, I'll probably bring home some soil samples. That was going to be the next thing. Have you taken soil samples? I did. This would be the second year. Okay. One. This is the start of like the second summer. I took okay. it the first summer. Okay. I I didn't or did I do it last year? Did you put anything into yes, the soil? Did I did. You? Yep. I did exactly what they recommended. So now I'm going to take a soil sample from each field and see what send it's doing. it and see where I'm at. Okay. Cool. And hopefully, the pH level will be better. There you go. So, um, up there we can also put out minerals. Um, 
I will check. I know we got a couple of uh, blocks out, uh, so I'll check to see how those are looking. Uh, if I can get my hands on a couple bit, uh, um, other ones, uh, I'll add that out there. And then I might put up some cameras. Okay. Because I'll be going back in July. Okay. So I'll be starting to set my cameras up because I'll do it in Memorial. I'll catch them in July, and then I'll reset them and get them in Labor Day. So you put them on. Now you start to see that antler development. Yep, I'll start to see the antlers, and I'll start to see the young ones start to coming by, uh, along with the young bear, and the wolves, and everything else that lives up there. Have you ever got a wolf on camera? Yes, got a wolf. Uh, a couple like, times. Yeah, I think you did show yeah. me that, didn't you? If I remember right, I don't know why I asked that. You I know, can't remember. I'm getting old. <laughs> you are, and you're right. Uh, so, so Ken is going to plant some chestnut trees up on their property. Interesting choice in the UP. Yeah, um, are I, those? Uh, American chestnuts can by chance, and if so, let us know how those do. I, I've heard uh, some people have problems with those. This far north. Yeah, uh, not that they don't grow. They do grow. They just don't produce They're mass, right. a mass crop. Yeah, you got to watch because we might be on the northern edge of their boundaries. Well, yeah, we're close. So, and, and like we've talked before, when, when, some, when you buy things from nurseries, if you can get them from a nursery around here where they're raised yeah, around yeah. here as opposed if you were to take a like i'll just say for extreme wise uh southern florida nursery yeah. and throw it up into the up yeah tree gets a little shocked unless yeah it, it, you know you think of it like it was just like me going on vacation i went from here it was in the 40s and 50s and i travel you know a day all the way down to the gulf and it's 80 degrees and it's like ah, right this is hot <laughs> you know did you get sunburned my my below my knees did a little bit and top okay. of my feet. And I saw you were wearing the uh, Cabela's uh, quick dry shirt. Quick dry shirt. Yeah, the real cool one that that actually pulls perspiration. And, and some people were giving me a little grief about it. You know, hey, you're supposed to be out. You know, as a kid, I spent a lot of time in the sun roofing houses, and I used to blister like crazy. And you know, as you get older, you worry about skin cancer. So I cover up and I use my fishing I, shirt. I tell you what, it was nice and cool. It, well, that's. Along those lines, and, and this is just um, a safety thing, it, wearing ear protection now to, to cut my lawn. Yeah, yeah. Something is, I, I, I wish I had done some stuff like that because now I've got constant ringing. i got tinnitus like crazy in my right, ears. Right, I never would have thought that. But now lately in the last few years with uh, this push for um, safety, it, it, it goes from where the workplace. It, it's actually trickling home now, mm-hmm. whether it be eye protection or hearing protection. Or sun protection. Yep. And at our age, I hate to admit it, you know, skin cancer type things, you know, we don't want to play around with that. No, I don't want to have to deal with it. And, uh, you know, I still get enough sun as it is. I'm not, you know, tanned by any stretch of the imagination. But, you know, I got a little bit on my face and, uh, and I got a little bit of peeling on my nose. So, I mean, I, I got some sun, enough to enough that I wanted. That, there you go. That was so, it. So. You know, and that's one of those things. It, it's I need, I need about a 100% blocker. Right. Yeah, it's you're fair skinned as well. Right. So. so but yeah, so this weekend get up there, um, get the cabin open. Once that gets settled down, probably spend Saturday just putting in food plots, getting everything tested, pulling the soil samples to bring home, send those get tested, so when I go back in July I can pick up what I need on my way up, have it throw it out on the plots. Do you fully open up camp, turn water on and all that? Yep. Absolutely. It's 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 always Yes. Fingers crossed. Yeah. Because you, well, you just basically replumbed the whole place last time. We just replumbed it. You put pecs last, in, right? Yep, we put pecs in last year. This will be interesting to see how that works. Right? <laughs> I don't Hope, mean to laugh, but hopefully I mean, you're going to find out. Yeah, hopefully it's real smooth. Because I know last time you went up, you had a heck of a time. Yeah, the last time we had all the pipes frozen. That that didn't go over. Turn well. the water on, it looked like the Bellagio. Yeah. <laughs> fountains was, everywhere. Fountains everywhere was right. Oh, so Ken's got an answer. They were from Pennsylvania. Not sure on the kind of chestnut. Okay. And these ones are supposed to produce in five to six years. We shall see. We got them for $10 a piece. So there you go. $10 a piece, plant six of them, see what happens. Right. You know, you can't go wrong. Ten, $10 a piece and see what happens. You can't go wrong with that. Denny Steiner's in the house tonight. Hey, Denny, what's going on? Denny Steiner. So I tell you what, uh, let's go ahead and we'll throw it to, to another break. And we come back, we'll... If you got any questions on that? We'll we'll cover those and we'll we'll kind of move along because I got some stuff I really want to talk about. I'm going to pick Danny's brain a little bit too here, so we're going to step outside, take our second break. We'll be right back after this. PSE Archery has always dominated the speed category. Now the most revolutionary cam system ever to hit the market has perfected the shooting experience. 
Introducing PSE's Evolve Cam System, featuring extremely high let-off capabilities and the smoothest draw cycle in history. No other cam system has ever delivered this level of total comfort and total control. Experience PSE. Experience performance. Welcome back, third segment of the show. What is going on? You're, you're laughing over there. What's up? Deb says you pray. <laughs> you pray when you turn the water on. Yeah, yeah. That's right. Yeah. You, you wait until that pump cycles and stops. And stops. And you're like, and then you listen for the drip or the spray. Or the spray. I hear so. you. Well, so you're going to camp and opening camp up. I've been to camp. Uh, we had our annual meeting at our camp. While I was on vacation, I went and visited a deer camp. Oh, yeah. With my dad okay. uh, that he's looking at. And as you know, we've talked about it on the show, that I've actually got uh, partnered with three other guys down in Indiana yep. on, on a camp there. So after being at our camp, you getting ready to go open your camp, me going and visiting another one out of state and starting another one, it's like all this stuff about camps, talking about camps, yep. talking about rules, talking about like-minded people. And I thought... This is a good opportunity right now. Of some of the situations I've seen, I know yours is a little different because yours is family oriented. About if you were to join a camp, what would that be like? And what are some of the things you should consider when joining a camp? Is it a right fit for me, or is it not a right fit for me? That is an interesting question. Uh, we'll go. We'll go on the the premise. You're joining a, a non-family camp. That's kind of the things we'll, that we'll, we're we'll in. stay on that that side of it because obviously with my camp being all family. We just, it's all family typically. And mm -hmm. and that can create a whole set of unique circumstances. Circumstances. We'll just leave it at that. Because the reality is, whether it's four people, whether it's nine people, or whether it's 15 people, it's hard to get everybody on the same page and, and point that bus in a direction and head towards that goal. Okay, so let's, let's go with this. Uh, you're joining the camp. Are you joining it blindly, or are you being invited by another member that says, hey, would you join my camp with me? Mm -hmm. Let me ask you that. Because I Say uh, that again? Are you joining it blindly? You're okay. just, hey, there's an opening here for uh, in this camp I want to join. Yeah. Or are you having a friend say, hey, I got a camp. Would you like to join and come into our camp? Right. The reason I'm asking is because, just like you said, if you go blindly into a camp, it's kind of hard to gauge where everybody's at, whether you're at 4, 9, 15, mm -hmm. and say, hmm. And what does that mean? Right. Uh, am I walking into Conservation Gun Ho, or am I walking into right on the next to the Brown mem down. membership of PETA? You, yeah. you, don't, you don't know what their, 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 their mindset is. And so when, you're, when you think about that, it's it, it almost like you'd wish you'd, if this happens, you'd want somebody that you know going in, so there's at least two of you. Right. Because usually that person is pretty like-minded. Right. Exactly. You know? Those are some of the things that, that we're dealing with. I, and I'll, I'll just, I'm going to put this out there right now. The camp we looked at, and I'm not going to say the name of the camp or anything. I'm not even going to tell you exactly where it's at, other than the fact it's in central Alabama uh, that my dad went and looked at. And they're looking for members. They've had five people leave their camp. And it was because of not being like-minded. And in, at the camp I belong to right now, the, the one here in Michigan, we had four people just step away from our camp for the same reasons, because of what people expect out of camp and, and the things that the camp actually offers. Well, I, it's almost like uh, if you're doing an interview, like the first question is, what does camp mean to you? Right. Because to some people it means, hey, I'm going to go up. I'm going to be a person that hunts. Most of the time, I'm going to mm -hmm. be up there quite often throughout the year to see how it goes. Yep. Or are you the guy that, well, it's November, November 14th. 14th. I got my gun. I got my bullets. Yeah, I'm I going got to my camp. orange. I'm going north to camp. Yep. I'm going to be there three days, maybe. And then I'm going to come home. And yep. that's all you see of camp for the entire year. So that has, I, yeah, that's an interesting question. Uh, definitely going in. Um, and then, you know, you're in there. And then if you have meetings to discuss uh, rules, bylaws, and that, kind of getting a gist of where Hunter 1 sits, Hunter 2 sits, and just kind of start to feel, you know, can you are they approachable? Yeah. Is it, does the camp offer, uh, the camp as a whole is an open book, and, you know, you, you maybe make a draw for your, your blind for that morning or stand, or do you have a dedicated hunting area for you and your family only? 
You know, those are some of those types of things. Well, that, that, that's some of the rules, you know, that are, that are always talked things about. Things to consider. Uh, are they going to allow bow hunting? Are mm-hmm. they going to allow uh, rifle muzzle loading? Are they going to allow youth hunting? You know, you, you know, all these things got to be settled upon because some people don't like... What you expect out of a camp could be totally different oh. than what, what's offered when when you get involved. It's Absolutely. those questions that you need to ask. Right, and... and like I know you had when you started uh, getting your camp at the time up here in Michigan, uh, going down the, we need to shoot more does because obviously you were overrun by them, mm-hmm. and some people didn't take it the right way, and you had to sit, you had to have a sit down and have a hunter to hunter talk with them and say, hey, it's going to be okay, right? And right. lo and behold, the next year you were covered up in them again, right? right. So you know when you can't, when you can't put a food plot in. And you sit there and look at it and go, and you can't figure it out if it's growing, but yet it's only this tall. You put a grow cage in, and it's this tall inside the grow cage. Right, exactly. So yeah, yeah you know you got issues. It's but those are the types of things, you know, old old school hunters versus new school. You know what I call new school people who are, are of the the land management and wild game management, you know, herd management style versus, uh, you know, like you said, I'm not shooting any does. You know, I'm not going to do that. That we just don't do that. I I tell you what. Let me ask you this. Mm-hmm. See, you might, you might not. I, I wish I had the technology today that I had when I first started hunting to show, at the time, the older guys. Mm-hmm. Because the decisions they made back then right. were like, uh, but if you see it on a game camera, you'd be like, they are here. Right, right. You, you know, we got to do some things in this forest. And that brought up, it brings up land management, right? Right. So... And to answer my brother's question, uh, has it ever not leaked when you opened it up? <laughs> I think there's a couple times that we we lucked out. Opened up camp and no water leaks. Yeah, well, okay. you know, I think there was a few times that... Uh, well, I'm thinking that Danny the plumber did a fine job, and I bet you you open it up and uh, you don't have it, any leaks. I got to hand it out to my cousin and his his uh, son and, and son-in-law. They we And my brother was there, too, and uh, we it was, it, was a, it was a busy weekend. But well, we got it done. So okay. now I'm just hoping everything was shut down properly. Right, right. And everything goes in. So, but no, going back to your question about camps, um, walking into a blind camp, just signing up and say, hey, that would be interesting. Well, that's that's kind of what my dad and I did. You know, he's been, he's heard a lot about this camp. And they're looking for members. So anybody that's looking for a hunting camp or hunting opportunity in central Alabama, get a hold of me and I'll pass the name along to the person that's that's taken perspective members because that's what we did. My dad got a hold of this guy uh, through mutual friends. Said, "Hey, we, you know, I'd like to come take a look and see what you've got to offer." And while I was on vacation, actually, this was what's today, Sunday. This was yesterday morning. We met uh, this gentleman uh, in a nearby town and followed this person down to their okay. camp. Halfway there, in the middle of nowhere, my dad's truck dies. Really? <laughs> that was the interesting part. That's why I was late getting oh, home. Oh, that's night. why you were late getting out yeah. of heading home. So we went down, and actually the tour of the property took a lot longer than what I thought. How many acres? 2,600. It's a big camp. It's, it's a huge. Because yours is 640 here, right? Yes. Oh, my. You know, and the thing that I, my dad, being an old school hunter, and, and what was nice is the guy that took that we went with down there and another member who was there at that same time, all four of us rode around together on the property in a truck, and... The fact that my dad's truck broke down on the way down, we finished the trip going down with the gentleman we were following. So okay. the three of us were in the truck, and we got to listen to him talk about camp, their hunting styles, philosophy, what they want to do with the camp. And then he got to listen more so to me than my dad about hunting philosophy right. and what we believe in. They're wanting to go in the direction of deer management. They've started about three years ago, which is actually about the same time we started at our camp. Yep. You know, and so I give them my background and what I, you know, what I've learned and, and kind of what I thought and how it might apply to that camp. Um, so it was a really good conversation, you know, back and forth. And then the other gentleman, like I said, we got to camp. He joined us and they took us around. Uh, but this is a lease. It's all lease property, okay. which has its own unique set of circumstances. Yes. Versus buying land. But the biggest thing... I was trying to convince my dad, you know, he's, he's going to be 75 this year and it boils down to opportunity. You know, he wants to hunt. He doesn't want to drive all the way to Michigan anymore, which I understand why. Uh, the opportunity is not there in Indiana for me to bring him to Indiana just by the rules that we have set up at that camp. And he, he just wants to get out and do some hunting on some big bucks. 
They got big bucks. Do they? But they got big bucks. Okay. Yeah. Trail cam photos do not lie. <laughs> right? No, no, they don't lie. Um, the tracks that I saw while on the property in, in the two tracks do not lie. Okay. The sign that I saw. Saw a ton of turkey and actually saw turkey poults that couldn't have been hatched more in a couple of days. Really? That was cool. Yeah. But there was there was hens all over the place. So I figured they're just now, their clutches are just now hatching. Okay. So they were... They were all on the ground, obviously, middle of the day, but, you know, they were in some thick cover. So that was wow, pretty cool. that's pretty cool. So, you, so so this place offers the ability to deer, deer hunt and turkey hunt. Yeah, absolutely. Any yep. other game? Not really. I okay. mean, there's there's some small game opportunity, okay. but, right. yeah, maybe some quail. I'm not sure. Oh, I, did, okay. I, did, yeah. I didn't ask that. Don't think about that here in Michigan. Right. <laughs> Can't kill the songbird. Right. <laughs> so, uh, but my dad, he keeps going, well, you know, I just don't know if I want to spend the money because there's no lodge there or, or common house to use as sleeping quarters like we've got here in michigan oh so campers okay campers okay and they do have power on the property which is nice the way they had it set up come off power pull they had 10 or 12 different lots you know poles with a plug in so you can plug your oh, camper so, in. okay so almost like a mini campground yep exactly oh okay for okay so you bring your camper you're hunting the leases yep oh okay yeah. and i kept telling them that's like dad you don't understand in order to hunt big bucks now this just the reality of hunting in today's world if you want to hunt big bucks there's three things you either got to join a hunt club or you've got to buy land and you know the hunt club like we've got you got to buy into and then pay dues or you get into one like down there where there's no land you lease it so it's just annual dues right or or you go to an outfitter and pay an outfitter to hunt big bucks. Yeah, you know, you we see it here on Michigan uh in Michigan that there there are big bucks on state land, but that's not guaranteed. You no. can you can hunt that buck um regularly and go out there and there's somebody sitting in your tree right next to your tree stand. Exactly. Yeah. You know, so the opportunities here and basically anywhere that to get on state land, uh I don't know if state land down there or uh, they have a type of state land. Oh yeah. yeah. Okay, they do. Okay, good. Yeah, there's national forest within about two miles of the uh, of my family farm. So my guess is when the season opens up, the deer leave and head for private land. Down there, that national forest is ex- it, it is extremely hard to hunt because it's deep, deep ravines and hills. Really tall. It's just one after the other after the other, and no four no four wheelers or vehicles allowed. So it's all walk in. Yes. And you can be walking for a while. You can walk for days. Oof. Days. Oof. Yes. It, it's that big. I mean, it, it hunts big. It is big. Wow. Um, a lot of people get lost in there. Is there a, a, an amount, how many hunters limited to this camp? Uh, there, yes. They've got 12 total memberships, and I think they're looking for four more people i think so okay so you talked about get that's another part of 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 going into a camp or getting pulled into a camp or whatever you're gonna call it um being able to sit around and talk being able to sit around with the guys or or gals and and finding out what their thoughts are right you had a little bit of opportunity which was kind of cool to hear his philosophy yes and then he listened to your philosophy yep so that's kind of cool um yeah it man Almost like an interview process, really. It is, and, and really, if you're going to join a hunting camp, no matter what, if it's if it's a club like here in Michigan, or if it's one like down in uh, Indiana or Alabama, or you're wanting to start one, you know. And I, I will say this: starting a hunting camp with your friends sometimes might not be the best thing to do, because I'll tell you, just like putting friendships together in a working condition. It can work great, or it can it can tear a friendship it can blow apart. Up, it can right? it can blow a friendship apart. Absolutely. You know. Um, luckily, Up North Journal is the reason I met you. Yeah. It wasn't the fact that I met you. Then we did Up North Journal. Right. You no. Know, so actually, it worked the other way. And you know, and that's funny. You mentioned that. That that's uh, also the reason I bring this up is because I see my brothers watching. Um, he hunts private land, mm-hmm. but he hunts a, a basically it's a narrow strip. Okay. So depending on which way it goes, he might have issues going to one neighbor as opposed to another neighbor. Right. So it, it, and that's another dynamic. dynamic that we have the same problem up at our camp as well. If mm-hmm. it goes, to, we know if it goes to one neighbor, uh, he's going to be pretty cheesed off, and we still don't know why. But you know, it's just like so. Not only do you have to have relationships within the camp, try to get relationships around the camp. Right. Right. Because that's a tough one. You know, when you've got. Well, like we we have our co-op up 
up at our place. Um, there's been some issues with that that I'm not even going to get into here on the show. But if there's if you're trying to get somebody into the co-op or somebody's trying to get you to join a co-op and there's friction between you guys, that that can cause huge, huge implications. And that that friction can be over something really, really small. Or really, really big. Or really, really big. Yeah. And then you might not even know you cheesed them off. Yeah. So communication is a big, big thing. You see it at your job, and I see it at my job. Yep. So if there's one thing that's definitely you got to check into in a camp is communication factor. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's become a lot easier with emails and right. the internet. Right. You know, I, I know you had your, uh, with your place up north, uh, able to, to share photos and everything. And right. Get on a Facebook page, private, and, you know, that man, do that back in the day. I remember when my dad... They had hunting meetings. Mm-hmm. Basically, there's a barbecue over at the guy's house. But, right. You know, it's like, hey, we're going to go over, and all the guys from the camp are going to be there, which is pretty much mainly all family plus mm-hmm. a couple others. And we go have a barbecue, and they talk to her, whatever. But, but yeah, I'd say communication, um, knowing your neighbors, knowing who you're getting in with. Knowing the people in your camp. Right. That's, <laughs> That's the first Ooh. and foremost important thing. You know, hunting philosophy is huge. It is huge. Um, it can divide a camp up, you know, baiting or not baiting, whether it's, you know, legal or not legal. Um, do they, do they, do they like, uh, I'm just going to throw this out. Do they like the youth season? Right. You yeah. Know? Cause we got, I know in this state, some, there's some people that are they, they, dead set against it, dead set against it mm-hmm. because they think oh, they go out there and the kids don't shoot the bucks. The, the parents do vice versa, whatever. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, you'd have to, you know, when can you go into the woods? Yep. Can, yep. Is there a quiet time beforehand? How long is that quiet time? Oh, that is one rule at your camp that just absolutely just bewilders me. Well, that's going to change. <laughs> is, is, is that no hunting the week before gun season? That's going to change. That's like prime time. It's, uh, I, but those are things that, you know, when my dad got into that camp, that's the way it was, you know? And Well, yeah. That's and, it. I, and me, I was just like, I was just along for the ride. I couldn't say anything. See, at the time, how many of them bow hunted? My dad and one other person. That's why. Two out of nine. Yeah. Right. Well, there was 10 at that time. Oh, 2 out of 10. Okay. Yeah, there's 9 now. But the the point is, yeah, a lot of them don't allow bow hunting because most of them are rifle hunters in some camps, and they don't want people killing the bucks before they get the opportunity to. Right. You know, it's it, those are things you really got to think about before you join a camp. And Absolutely. So if you Absolutely. become a bow hunter later on, like my dad, you know, he right. doesn't and bow hunt so much now. He's using a crossbow. He could get out there, though. It's it's those types of things. It, you really got to gotta think about. So... Okay, so my brother just confirmed it. Bad issues, not friendly, 600 feet wide by a half a mile deep. That's tough hunting. That's what he hunts. You know, and that's, the, you, you think about the, the main section of our property here in Michigan. It's a half mile wide, mile and a half long. You know, it's it's not square. It's, it's yeah, a rectangle. It, it makes it tough for people to get to certain stands and driving issues, like you said. Oh, yeah. Driving through a certain spot where somebody may be hunting or, you know, it's... Or are you sharing areas? Oh, that's the other part. Does 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 if you're a early riser, like to get to your stand an hour before daylight, get everything calmed down, mm-hmm. and you got Mister Five Minute Man zipping through at 100 miles an hour in his uh, truck, yeah, or a quad or, or whatever, quad, whatever it might be, you know, trying to get there as the sun's coming up because yep. he typically runs late. It's like ugh, right, been there. So it's 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 just a lot of things to think about when when you're going to join or start a hunting camp. In, in, in that go, and that even goes, if you guys join up together, and in, in, in not even a camp, but just say a group that starts going to uh, a state land area. Because mm-hmm. then you run into, you know, you, you get into the, okay, we're in this area all the time. We're all, but then, actually, I think it was uh, Patrick Durkin, mm-hmm. he, you know, on his um, elk hunts. He always go to the same place, same place. And, and all of a sudden, one year shows up, and there's somebody else there. There's somebody else there, and he's like, uh-oh. You know, so that, that's push in deeper. Right. Yeah. So, you know, that that's some of the things um, you almost want, like an interview process, but it, things change over time, too. Yeah, absolutely. And, and actually, that's what we're doing at our camp. So, uh, you know, just putting that out there right now, like I said, we've got four four memberships open at our place. Yep. So, um, you know, if anybody's looking, we're, we're looking. Uh, we're not ready to take anybody in just yet. But, uh, you know, that's something if you're interested, just PM me and let me know and we can we can talk. We can talk. <laughs> so you gotta like talking. But yeah, it's 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 strange how uh, a, a a critter with fur on him and antlers on his head can can divide people so strongly. 
you know right exactly so, so you know how that goes absolutely so i tell you what let's step outside let's take our next break we come back we'll wrap up the show we've, we've chewed up a little bit of time here so we'll step outside and be right back after this Acceleration is part of PSE's DNA. PSE pioneered the speed movement. Now they've developed the Vapor category to help you find the most powerful bows on the market to fit you. High speed equates to intense power and building the momentum you need to be successful. Are you a Vapor shooter? Find out at PSEArchery.com. Welcome back. Last segment of the show. We got about 10 minutes or so here. To Last segment of the show. Chatted up a little bit, talking about deer camps and joining deer camps or starting deer camps and bringing new people in or what have you. It's, yeah, it's, it's, you know, I, I would, joining a blind one would be interesting, but could be dangerous. I'd rather join with a friend anyways. Well, you know, my dad joined that way. He, uh, he actually joined kind of blind when he got into the camp that, that is that how he did it yeah kind of well a friend of his told him that a friend of his was a member there and was going to sell their membership oh okay so, and he wanted a place to hunt yep wanted another you know a another place to hunt and that became our place to hunt at that time you know gotcha we uh, we sold our cabin after that but um yeah long story short you know my dad retired moved south handed the membership off to me and you know, I'm into deer, yep. started into deer management about the time that I got the membership handed to me. So, you know, I, uh, I started kind of pushing a little bit on that side and, and that's kind of where we're at now, you know, and like I said, the mindsets change, people get older, the way people hunt changes, or maybe they don't change and the group wants to move a direction. And that's, that's kind of what happened at our place. You know, the group wants to move a direction and some didn't want to go that direction and, and things in their life had changed and they decided, uh, okay, well, you know what, we'll, We'll just let somebody else that, that, come it, in and, you know, you know and take even, the camp in that direction. And it's, my family, gosh, always hunted the UP. Yeah. Um, they had one spot, hunted for years together. Tradition. And then, you know, then we ended up moving to another spot. We sold one spot. And it was, um, like I said, that's why I wish I had my knowledge back in the 80s and I was a little yeah. bit older, but stuff happens. It, it does. Is what it is, you know, right? uh, traditions um, sometimes get in the way of hunting camps as well. So, you know, the younger cousins that we have got together. We we got what we got today, and it, it's working out good. You know, like you said, we're all family. Right. So we, we, we're all on the same mindset, basically, and it's it's one of those things. We, we have a good time. We get to see family, and we bring up friends every once in a while, and we have a good time. Um, but, yeah, it's it's pretty cool. It, it, traditions are, are fun. They're fun, but they can also get in the way of of some things that you're trying to accomplish. Oh yeah. Especially you know? if you get, get some, well, if you get some people that are doing it for the, uh, the word I'm looking for, the, the, the I want to say chic, but, uh, the, I'm a, I'm a hunter and I'm going to go sit in the lodge and I'm going to go kill a deer, go kill a deer. But that's about all I'm going to do. The because, male machismo side of it. Right. It's, just, it's, it's, you know, look at me, look at me. I go to a lodge and I do this and I do that. It's just like, well, yeah, I just I want I just want to go in the woods and you know I want to go in make the woods, it better, have some fun, make it better, see the the birds and the the squirrels and the deer and the bear and everything. But when I get back to camp, I want to have some fun too. Sure, talking and having a good time instead of swapping stories and telling lies. Right, exactly. <laughs> instead of these, some of these people, you know, it's like, where on planet Earth are you coming from? Right. Yeah. It it's some sometimes it just it makes you go, huh? <laughs> you know that's that, that's no lie there because that just and we see it sometimes when we're out doing our public events it's like yeah. we, we love to listen to people talk don't get us wrong but it's, you can tell right away but you, there's some stories you just like whoa yeah you can tell right away when of what type of person they are in the woods right or at camp or whatever it is kid you not i had one guy when i was hunting mile the last time i hunted a mile the guy i looked at his buck and basically his motto was keep shooting until it was down. How many holes did it have in it? He had five holes in it. Wow. I kid you not. And I was like, excuse me, where are you hunting? Because I'm not going there. Right, right. And it was uh, basically his motto was shoot until it's down. He hit it. He, he shot the front leg off, shot an antler off, shot it in the neck, <laughs> shot it in the rear. And I think he hit it one more time. 
And then I was like, whoa. Check, please. Yeah, that's, I'm the, that's the kind of person you don't want to be anywhere near. Again, in my other last year, coming across. There was, that was state land, I take it. Yes, coming across up over a hill. All of a sudden, a semi-automatic rings out, mm-hmm. and we can hear the bullets going through the, the woods. Mm-hmm. And we're like, hey! So we get up, we, we get down up to the road. These two guys come across, come around. The one guy had a 12 gauge, and he had a bandoleros on, and he had them loaded up. Right, the same look. Um, and his buddy had a, <laughs> oh, had wow. a it was a Springfield 30 odd six semi out of World War II. And he, hey, did you see anybody shoot? No. We're out of there. Right, right. So, oh, and my brother's right. Best memories, absolutely. You know, it, Ultimately, I think that's what we're all looking for, memories. You know, you're out there to make memories um, and give back to the resource. Uh, to me, at least for me, to be able to give back well, to the resource. That, like this weekend. You're going to go up, open the cabin, and we're going to go put in food plots. Right. And the right. reason we're putting in food plots is for the wildlife. Mm-hmm. The reason why we did our um, forest project, for the animals. Yep. Help out the state as well. Mm-hmm. You know, get some of that. Uh, firewood out of the woods for them. So in case there is a forest fire, God help us. It doesn't burn the whole state down. Right. Uh, so, but it's just the love of the outdoors, man. Yeah. And uh, I tell you what, it's just, whew, can't wait. You know, once I got down there uh, to the to the place we were looking at, down in Alabama yesterday morning, it uh, it just, I mean, when I was on the beach, it, it, it was just, oh, relax, kick back, take it yep. easy. Okay. You know. Yeah, I was on Facebook a little bit, I'll admit, you know, checking emails. I mean, it's just, you have to in today's world. But I didn't do it nowhere near as much. Didn't watch TV. You know, I turned it on, I think, to watch the weather. I think my wife was getting a, a shower at one point, and I turned on a hunting show. Yeah. <laughs> Go figure, you know. Um, you, you just, that's what you do on vacation like that. But once I got down there on the property, it's like, hmm, okay, if I hunted here, how would I hunt that? Right. How would I hunt that draw, you know? Um, you know, how would I hunt that ridge? Okay, what type of, of woods are here? And you, what, was it was it mixed woods, woods and fields? A lot of pine. See this oh, a lot. A lot pines. Most oh. of this lease is uh, warehouser lumbering industry. Oh, okay. You know they do a lot of cutting. Um, you, you can see they've cut twice in the last eight years in in in, a, in spots. Okay, it's not like they come through and just buzz the no, whole no, no, no. twenty six hundred acres. But you know, right now they had just cut like I probably look like about eighty to one hundred twenty acres. On the side of a slope, you know. I mean, they went through and they cleared it. So basically, they've set up these these tracts of lands. They they'll come in and take out a spot for this year. Yep. And then be done. They're, they're off to the next spot. Yep. Okay. And it might be it. Might, they may not cut in the, in in that area for another four or five years. Right. You know, that's what uh, my uh, forest manager he kind of said. If you got it going, you could almost literally just cut twenty acres. Every year, I think it's 20, 20 or ten. Checkerboard it, kind of. Yeah. yeah, and then when you're at the at the other end, come back and do come it back, again. start again. Yeah. So yeah, it was it was interesting to to see that. But like I said, it, it really makes you think. Okay, well now if they come in here and cut like the, where they had that cut, it's like is that hunt, huntable this year? Yeah, probably not. What do you do with the blind? Where would you move? Would you hunt the edge? How long does it take the deer to come back into that area? You know, it's very interesting. Once you've hunted a piece of property for a, a period of time, you you got it figured out. Well, let's take Mike and move him here, and you're going to hunt here now. That's a state or two away or five. Figure it out. See, see, it makes you think. Typically, up by us, if there's a fresh cutting deer in it, go hunt it. Yeah. Now down there, I think I don't pines know. not so much, but they do have hardwoods. Okay. You know, there were some hardwoods on there as well. Yeah, cause... and creek bottoms, and that was the big thing. It, it it reminded me a lot of when I hunted over at Clint Turner's place in Illinois. Oh yeah, okay. But a ton of woods versus at big agriculture in a big deep ravine. Right, is where he was at. But it, it, it reminded me hunt hunt the draws, hunt the corridor, travel corridors. You know the creek bottoms and things like that. Um, yeah, it, it's just the other thing that really got me is you know I've been to Alabama down to the family farm every year as a kid, spent summers down there, you know, and travel the general area. But, you know, not being uh, out of that area much, like I've never been south of Birmingham. Okay. Went down to the Gulf, you know, and traveling that whole state, traveling down to that hunting camp. The freeways reminded me of going up north here in Michigan. Woods, just woods, not no agriculture. Like when you travel Indiana, Ohio, Kentucky, Tennessee, fields. there's fields, you see woodlots. Right. You know, but this is just woods, and you could see 
okay, maybe they clear cut a section behind that going along the freeway. And you can kind of see in there. But on the other side of that is more woods. It's just it's just big tracks of, of wooded area. I was blown away. I never knew that about the state. That's pretty cool. That it was that there was that much timber in that state along at least along the freeways and the roads that I traveled. Okay. So there's a lot of well, there's a lot of timber there then. Yeah, yeah. And, and if and if they can come in and, and just do tracks of cuts at a time, then you know there's a lot of timber. Yeah. And a lot of critters in there too. Absolutely. oh absolutely. I can imagine. So uh, but that that's that's probably the one thing I really noticed a lot. And even traveling south, you know, I'd look in a field. Hmm, how would I hunt that? <laughs> <laughs> right. Man, that looks like a good deer hunting spot, man. I, I think deer would be on that edge right there. Where would I put a tree stand? Do you ever do that going down the highway? Oh, abso- absolutely. Yeah. I did it when we were heading over to Grand Rapids. You know, you'll see blinds, elevated blinds, and you'll look to see what... Why how, are they hunting there? And, and <laughs> it was kind of funny. They were... Most of the elevated blinds were hunting edges yeah they're hunting the ag field then you had the edge and then depend sometimes it went into a woods or mm-hmm. sometimes that was a, a like almost like a hedgerow and then it got into like a crp field type yeah where you could see the deer so they're hunting both sides and so oh yeah oh yeah absolutely you got to do that that's just so how would you hunt that I don't yeah know. see that's that's the problem is the older i get you know my my fine motor skills aren't quite what they used to be so as i'm driving i'm I'm actually kind of turning the way I, I look, and, and Shannon gets out. She's like, "Keep your eyes on the road." Oh yeah, I get that too. You look, mm-hmm. I drive. You drive, I'll look. Yeah, it's like, well, you're not looking at what I want to look at. You right. know, you're you're not. I'm I'm trying to think this through. <laughs> Did you see any coyotes or anything traveling? Not alive. Okay. Yeah, right. dead on the side of the road. Yeah. yeah. So okay. I saw a good. I, I'd say six, seven, eight of them. Okay. Yeah. I was but wondering I, because I traveled twenty two hundred and fifty miles though. Right, I know you in did. A week. That's what I, was, I was like, hmm, yeah, wonder, we put a lot of miles on. I wonder what you saw. But yeah, actually, it was over twenty three hundred miles we put on. Cool. In, in a week's time, so yeah, a lot, a lot of critters, a lot of armadillos down there. They got armadillos. Okay. I've seen a lot of those. Uh, saw I saw deer in every state except. No, I take that back. On the way down, we saw deer in every state until we got to Tennessee. Didn't see anything in Tennessee or Alabama. Then once we were there, I saw them in Alabama, and then I saw them in Tennessee coming back. Okay. So seen deer in every state that we went through. I had a incident yesterday. Real quick, um, I saved a turtle. Middle road? Yeah. Stop out and this carry him over? This, we were on a, one of the, the, the road behind me in the subdivision. Mm-hmm. This car's over, parked, and we pull up next to her. And I was, we were on the Ranger, and... She goes, it's a turtle. It was a big turtle, a big snapper. Okay. I go, this is why you carry gloves with you. And I picked it up by the tail and put it back. But it was, big, it was a big turtle. So yeah, Make soup out of him, man. That's what I kind of thought. <laughs> I just, like, now I'll just return him. Put him so, back. Yep. So it was Good for cool. you. Yeah, that was my... Uh, that was my... Good deed for the day. Good deed for the day. Yeah, yesterday was beautiful though, up here. Then you brought the weather back. So. I did not bring it back. It well, was it followed here. you, okay? It was here when I got here. Uh, no, I don't believe uh, that. I'm sticking to that. That's the story I'm sticking to. So, well, I don't know. That's about all I got. I mean, it was a good vacation. Uh, I got to get get my feet on another piece of hunting ground, and yeah, that's cool. it, you know, to look at, and that's always exciting. And listening to people talk about hunting, and so we're gonna get back to the gym this week. Yep, I've been there. I did my legs today, mm-hmm. so we're gonna do arms tomorrow because Wednesday we're gonna be back on here live, right? Wednesday we're gonna be talking with Tread Barta uh, if he has phone signal. Um, and you know, and okay, I got some messages this week and I'm, I'm good. It's going to throw this out there. People are like, man, you guys ran tread again this week. Well, you know what? I was on vacation. <laughs> I, I do deserve some time off. And we re-ran a show that we actually recorded Wednesday with Trey. Right. And so, I even went on live and told them everybody. It's my, yeah. first, first of all, it was Mother's Day. Right. And then it was, you were on vacation. Right. And I had just gotten back. It's like. So with that being said, you know, if there's some things that, on the, that you want us to talk about on the show, let us know. Yeah. You know, drop us an email, drop us a private message, text us, whatever, if you've got our phone number. Let us know. Um, but no, we're, we're not we're not turning the show over completely uh, and covering that. Whole, we're, we are going to cover the whole trip, but we're going to do that on Wednesdays. So yeah, we're running a, a special a, segment. A, a side show. Yeah, on, on, on Wednesdays. So uh, we're going to have that as a supplement to our regular show. So and we should be back next Sunday night. You're coming back. I should be back. Okay. If not, I'll give him a call and we'll get him on the phone as he's if driving not, down the right. highway. If not, fighting traffic. If not, I should be in a. <laughs> I should be in an area where I have cell phone signal. Well, if you're running a little late, maybe we'll put the show off just a tad. Yeah, we'll see. So but we'll see we, we always try to beat the traffic back on Monday. Gotcha. So because Orange Barrel season is in full swing. It is, and I hit a lot of that on the way home. Did you? Oh yeah, oh. yeah. There was a lot of construction. Didn't slow me down so much, but yeah, there was a lot of it. 
know. That's one thing about traveling late at night on a Saturday. You can get through some of that stuff pretty quick. So. Right. Exactly. So. But uh, I'll tell you what, for for the uh, the podcast portion of the show, we're going to go ahead and wrap it up. We'll hang on to the live stream here for a few minutes if you got any questions. So we're going to wrap up the podcast portion. We'll see you again next week, folks. And don't forget, you can catch us in syndication at 2 p.m. Eastern Time on goodtalkradio.com. This episode was brought to you by PSE Archery, Scentlock Technologies, Scent Blocker, Rambo Bikes, Hunter's Blend Coffee, Limb Walker Game Calls, Stanislavski Releases, Copper John Sights, Easy Cut Outdoor Products, Fourth Arrow Camera Arms, Wind Sense Hunting Sense, X Stand Tree Stands, Spot Shooters, Gut Check Indicators, and Packer Max Cultipackers. Thanks for listening, and join us again here next week. Until then, remember, as we always like to say, if you're out on the water or in the woods, shoot straight and be safe until next week on the Up North Journal.